Hi everybody, my name is Elena. I'm a junior at NC State and I am a business major in the College of Management. I'll be giving a presentation on student life. You're welcome to ask me questions throughout the presentation. I don't mind pausing to answer those or you can wait till the end where I'll answer a lot of questions. Okay, so just to start out, NC State is in the heart of Raleigh. There are ton there's tons to do around here. Um, you can see on our slide we mentioned arts and museums. Um, the North Carolina Museum of Art is really close to campus. I've been there several times. Um, we also have um, a, an art museum in downtown Raleigh called CAM. And that museum actually works with a lot of NC State students in our College of Design. So we're really connected with the arts. Um, there's tons of outdoor activities, parks and rec, tons of stuff to do. We do have more than one campus. Um, you probably heard of Centennial Campus. That's where our College of Engineering is located. It's really close, just a bus ride away. Tons of students that live off campus live closer to the College of Engineering. I know it's a concern for some students. They think, oh, maybe it's too far away, but I can guarantee it isn't. And we also have our College of Vet veterinary medicine as well. And Carter Finley and PNC are huge, amazing. That's where you'll be if you're at one of our sporting events, most likely. Um, and there's also a lot of concerts, um, hockey games held at PNC. Um, and it's awesome that it's so close to campus. So housing is a hot topic right now. A lot of Freshmen are interested in finding out about certain dorms and which ones they should try to get into. We have three types of dorms, suite style, hall style, and a renovated motel style. Hall style is probably what you think when you think of a college dorm. Um, you have a main floor, a bunch of rooms, and all those rooms in the hall share one major bathroom. And the, one hall is going to be all female or all male. Suite style, a um, little bit different. You're going to have a suite on a floor. A, a floor may have four suites. Um, it changes with the different types of dorms. There are suites with four bedrooms or five bedrooms. Within the suite is the bathroom, so you kind of are in a smaller pod um, and you all share one bathroom, which usually has um, two toilet stalls and two showers. And then the renovated motel style, we have two dorms that fall under that category, which are North Hall and Avent Ferry. And how those work, um, pretty self-explanatory, but um, I'll just describe them anyway. You have um, a room with a bathroom inside, and then of course once you exit your room, you're outside and um, you'd have to go down the stairs or whatever. So we have tons of options. When I was a freshman, I lived in Carroll Hall, one of the Tri Towers, and that was a suite style. And overall, I had a good experience. You know, my room was small, but it, you know, it didn't surprise me how small it was um, at all. And one tip I like to give students is, if you plan on living in a dorm, I would try to find some large rugs or carpet. You can get scrap carpet from some places to use. That kind of helps make your dorm a little more homey. And we do have living and learning villages at state. Um, I can just name a couple. Like um, next year we're going to have a new village, the entrepreneur, I think, entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial village um, for people interested in that area. And villages help students live with other students who have similar interests. We have an arts village, we have a global village. So safety at state is really important. It's important for any college student. And when you come to the new student orientation in the summer, um, you'll have a presentation on safety from one of the campus police officers. It's important to them um, and to our university that you know how to hold yourself in certain situations and you know how to get help if you ever need it. We have a ton of towers around campus, these blue light towers. Um, you're, they're there in case of emergency. You can press them and 
um, it'll send for emergency assistance. Our, if you dial 911 on campus, it goes directly to our campus police. And we also have an escort service, so if you're anywhere late at night, you don't want to be your, your, the walk is too far to your dorm late at night, you can call them and they'll come pick you up. I've used this service before, it's really nice. So if it's too late and you don't want to walk alone, just call them, that's what they're there for. And transportation at state, um, we have the Wolf Line, that's our major bus system for campus. It's also a public bus line. And we have the CAP bus system in Raleigh, Triangle Transit, which goes all over Chapel Hill, Durham, and Raleigh. And as a state student, you can get a Go Pass for the Triangle Transit um, for free, which is awesome. And other notes about transportation, we don't encourage freshmen to bring their cars, but you definitely have the option if you'd like to. Um, parking permits are sold during the summer online, and you don't have a whole lot of options as a freshman. Uh, when I was a freshman, I got an RS lot parking permit, and it costs about $80. I know the price goes up a little bit every year, um, and that, that was located on Centennial Campus, so if I needed my car to go home, I just took a bus there. It was doable, but it wasn't totally convenient. It gets a little easier when you get um, to be a sophomore or you're older and you live in an apartment. So dining at NC State. Um, we have three dining halls and those are, I'm sure most of you are familiar with what a dining hall is, but when you go to the dining hall, you just have a meal swipe, um, you're good to go, and it's self-service, buffet style. You can get anything you want there. That's what most people do for dinner that live on campus. Um, you're going to have a meal plan if you choose. I recommend it. If you live on campus, it's going to be really difficult if you don't have a meal plan, but it is up to you. Um, several options that involve using meals on a weekly basis or a semester basis. There's tons of options and you can check those out online. Highly encourage it. The good thing is after a semester you can always change it because you may realize that that isn't the best for you. In dining dollars or something you can add on your card. You can use those to buy snacks and other foods around campus or use them um, if you want to use an equivalency but you're going over. Um, that's where you can use your dining dollars. The Oval is a new um, food court that was just built on Centennial Campus, which is great because people think um, that there's not enough, op like in the past people thought there weren't enough food options on Centennial, but now there's plenty. Um, there's also Port City Java there, and we have a few on campus, on main campus as well. And we also have the Atrium, you may have seen it, it's beside DH Hill Library. Tons of stuff in there, Chick-fil-A, pasta, wraps, salads, and we also have food options at Tally Student Union. And we even have um, C stores around campus where, I mean, it's a convenient store. You can find anything there that you could find in a gas station. So it's really nice if it's way late at night and you need some food. Okay, so campus activities. Athletics are a big deal at state, as you probably know. Um, and I, whether you're a huge sports fan or not, they're fun for everyone. I didn't come into college knowing a whole lot about sports because I went to an art school, so I didn't. We just didn't have sports. I didn't know really. I wasn't immersed in sports culture. But when I came here, I was really excited at the opportunity to be able to go to games for free um, and have these events on the weekend. And it was really easy. It's been easy for me um, to get tickets this whole time. I haven't gone to every single game, but I've gone to several football games and basketball games. Um, and right now we're working on a points a lot. Like it's not exactly a lottery. Um, it's a loyalty point system, which helps um, Sen so seniors um, and other upperclassmen, they start off the year with a certain amount of points so they can um, have a better chance of going to games before they leave. But the more games you go to, the more points that build up for you, the better your chances of are getting a ticket. 
Um, but ever since we changed to this method away from the lottery system, I think it's been really positive and a lot more students have been able to participate. Um, and also, when students don't go, choose not to go to a game that they got a ticket, um, they can let another student use it or they can turn it back into the system and it can go to someone else. So the ticketing system is really accommodating and everyone has a chance to go to games, which are really fun. Um, I think I like basketball games more um, just because I never grew up with football, but I've, I have loved going to the football games, don't get me wrong. You definitely have to learn all of our cheers and chants and everything. So clubs and student organizations, we have so many, I don't even know where to start really, but I can tell you about some clubs I've been involved with. And we, we have several service clubs, just interest clubs. Um, I don't know if I said service or cultural, but we had both of those. Um, I've been actively involved in our Vietnamese Student Association in my time at state, and that's really, it's just opened my eyes to other cultures because we try to, um, we try to get together with other groups um, to promote different cultures and learn new things about each other. It's been awesome. But there's over 600 clubs and organizations at state, so it's going to be harder to find a club that doesn't exist. Um, you know, it's crazy. Greek life at state, um, I know about 10% of our campus is involved in Greek life. You have a lot of options there. I'm not involved in Greek life, but I, I know a lot of people who are. There are national honor fraternities that are co-ed. There are um, fraternities and sororities that promote different cultural groups. Um, you name it. It's definitely available if that's something you're interested in. Um, they and they'll, you'll definitely see it, and um, those opportunities will be available after you get here. And intramural sports are a great option if you really like sports and you like to be active, but you're not involved in a club sport or university athletics, but you still want to have fun and stay in shape. Those are all through University Rec. Um, this year, I participated for the first time in intramural sports, and I did. Um, a volleyball team and it was really fun. They have, the good thing is they have different um, leagues, so they have, or classes, so they have an A, B, and a C. So based on your skill level, you can sign up for one of those. Um, obviously, the, the A is a little bit more competitive. The B is for people who are interested but not competitive, and C is for people who are really just having fun and um, they may not even know how to play the sport. So I think that's awesome, and um, faculty and staff can even get involved in those. They're really fun, um, and they don't require a lot of time, so it really is for fun. Um, your team can choose to practice if they want. Otherwise, you can just show up at the games when they happen. And community involvement. CSLEPS is an organization on campus um, where you can access a lot of service opportunities. And let's see. Yeah, so CSLEPS is the Center for Student Leadership, Ethics, and Community Service. Um, if you want to get plugged in with community service and you don't know how or where, um, you can definitely go there. But those opportunities will become available through a lot of other clubs as well. Um, and they also, one of their big things in CSLEPS is ASB, which is Alternative Service Break. So during fall break and spring break, if you don't have plans or you want to give back to society, there's a ton of uh, trips they have planned, um, service trips during that time. So academics at state, we have nine undergraduate colleges. Um, I would list them all, it would take a while. College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, College of Education, College of Design, etc. So it makes us a little different. It's something that I didn't totally understand until I got here, but I kind of figured out a little from the application process. It just makes us a little different from some other universities um, to have these kind of separate colleges, but we're still all unified. It's just um, 
your major is going to fall into this specific college. So say in the future, if you ever wanted to change your major and it's in a different college, you would essentially reapply to that college as an on-campus transfer. So um, some people don't totally understand that um, at first. Study abroad, tons of our students do it. They're, they go everywhere. We have a whole study abroad office and a lot of students do it during the summer, but you also have programs that offer study abroad for a whole semester. And a lot of them are designed to go towards specific degrees. So you can take classes that count for your major um, and don't set you back. And honors and scholars programs, um, some of you may be familiar with them. Uh, you can be invited to them before you come to state. You can um, nominate yourself for an invitation. Um, or you can be invited after your first semester or second semester. So there's plenty of opportunities to join or apply if you'd like. You do have to apply for honors and scholars. The honors program focuses a little bit more on um, research and academic immersion and scholars focuses a little bit more on the arts and getting involved in the community. Um, both are great programs. Um, they do have GPA requirements and things like that you would need to maintain. But they're great. Um, and there's also an honors village and a scholars village for housing. And scholars is in, I believe, Sullivan Hall. And honors is in Beckton and another one I can't think of. Undergraduate research is available to all students. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to be a student in a specific major to do undergraduate research for that major. And a lot of students um, take advantage of this with just seeing postings from professors or contacting their professors about undergraduate research. Uh, it's a great opportunity. Sometimes it's paid. Um, and I do have some friends who do undergraduate research in um, the College of Sciences, and they really enjoy it. And internships and co-op opportunities. Um, an internship typically means um, you can have a paid or unpaid um, internship. For, so basically you have a job for a set amount of time, whether during the year or during the summer. We have a lot of um, tools to help you get internships, such as our um, Career Development Center. And we have an online tool called EPAC, which our students all have access to. Um, to search for jobs. And a co-op differs a little in that when you take advantage of a co-op opportunity, you can kind of pause for a semester on your classes and work for someone for an entire semester, paid, um, and then just go right back to your studies. Um, I've known students to do that, and it really helped them um, when they were looking for a job. Okay, so now's the time for questions, and I do see a couple. So D'Angelo asks, how is the diversity at NC State? Um, diversity is really important to our university. It's important that our students feel unified from all different cultures and backgrounds, and that's something I've been really pleased with with coming to state. I feel like we have one of the most diverse campuses. Um, it's you know, I've met people from different countries, different walks of life every day, talking to someone new. Um, we're really diverse. I don't know what more to tell you other than if you look for it, you'll find it everywhere. There's, we have tons of different cultural groups. Um, it's awesome. Another question, do students ever intern at the NWS station? which I don't actually know what is. So maybe if you could give me some clarification. Um, and I can answer some other questions while you're doing that, because I'm sorry, I don't, I can't think on my feet. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's news station. Um, and I know a lot of communication majors do that. National Weather Service, <laughs> OK, sorry. Um, I'm not totally sure, but I know we do have a WRAL office right across the street from our campus. Um, and I did have a classmate who was doing an internship there 
she was in broadcasting. So I haven't heard about National Weather Service, but I'm sure students involved in that area, you know, you may want to talk to someone there. We do have the meteorology department, so I'm sure students have gotten involved through that. So I can definitely start answering some frequently asked questions, and I'll keep an eye out if more questions pop up. So online classes, that's a good thing to ask about. A lot of, a lot of students ask if you have an online alternative to the classes you need to take. And most, you, you do have a lot of online class opportunities. Not every class you need to take is going to be offered online in the time that you need to take it. But I've since, so I'm a junior, I've been here three years, and I've taken, I think, four classes online. So I'd say that's a pretty good number, but if you want to take more, it's available. I really like the flexibility. I'm signed up for two more next semester, so I'm really excited about that. And I, I do enjoy online classes. It helps you organize your time better. Um, you can do the work when you want, however you'd like. So, um, What's your favorite thing to eat in Raleigh? So there's, apart from the food we have on campus, we have a lot of surrounding places. Downtown is just a couple minutes away, and um, there's, gosh, there's so many places. But my favorite place is probably Sushi Nine on Western Boulevard, so I can give you an exact answer. But I do like um, sushi, and we have tons of places. There's Sushi O and Sushi Blues downtown, and I've tried those as well. But I do have my favorite place, and you'll probably find yours here. We have tons to eat on Hillsboro. Um, we have, I guess my favorites there are Chipotle and Jimmy John's. They're easy to uh, just pick up food real quick in between classes there. So one thing I do have a frequently asked questions about TAs. Um, and a TA is something you might not be used to until you get to college, um, but it's a teacher assistant or sometimes a GA, you'll be a graduate assistant. Um, and they do teach some courses as opposed to professors. Not a lot though. I've only had two courses um, taught by a TA. One I think was an economics course and the other was um, an intro math course. So it's not super common, but for some classes that a lot of students have to take, they are taught by a TA um, in a smaller section. So for example, my econ class had about 30 students in it. And yes, don't be scared to ask questions. I will try not to mess up reading them. I can talk a little bit more about parking. Um, it was definitely an interest to me when I was an incoming freshman. So I mentioned the RS lot, which is where that's the permit system is based on credits. So if you have a lot of credits, that's great. You still might not be able to compete against sophomores. Um, but the RS lot and the P lot, perimeter parking, I think those are the two options you would have as a freshman. Um, and the perimeter parking technically is on campus, so you would be able to walk to your car. It just might be a little far away, um, but it really wouldn't be too bad. Once you get older, or once you gain, once you get more credits, you can get a permit um, to have your car on campus even when you're still living in a dorm. Um, and of course, you don't have to live on campus at any time, and there's tons of housing around here too. But that's the main thing. You can also, once you live off campus, you can get a commuter um, parking permit and park in Coliseum Deck or Dan Allen um, and drive every day. So that's up to you. Those are typically around $350 to $380. Um, and the perimeter and RS slot are a lot um, less expensive. 
Okay, D'Angelo asks, thank you. How many classes are in a typical semester? Um, your semester is designed how you make it and how you schedule out your um, time at state. I think most majors require you to take 100, about 120 credits to graduate. So um, for me, I've the most credits I've taken in a semester was 16, and I usually, 16 or 17, I usually aim for 15 credits every semester, which is about five classes. Um, and sometimes the number changes when you have a lab because a lab is one credit, but you have the class complement, which is three. So that's four credits. Some English courses are four credits. And PE classes are one. So that's why the number fluctuates sometimes. And I know some st other studio classes can be five credits. But typically, most classes are three credits. And 12 is the number that would set you at a full-time student. So four classes, um, you'd be a full-time student. And I usually take five. It's been pretty manageable for me. I've never felt like I wanted to do less than that. But the good thing is that you do have the option to change that. Um, and I think the maximum credits you can take are 18 before you have to um, request permission from the college that you're in. Well, so I'll talk a little bit more about housing. If you have been accepted to state um, and you haven't filled out your housing application, definitely do that as soon as you can. How it works is it's basically on a first come first serve basis. And I know that you get to choose your top three dorms. So the sooner you apply, the better chance you have at getting your top pick. And if you know someone that you want a room with, how it works is you both, um, add the other's name on your housing application. So that's how it works. It's pretty simple. I know a lot of people ask about that if they do know someone that they want a room with. And of course, um, it'd be a good idea to choose the same dorms um, when you know you want a room with someone so that you guys both get the top pick that you want. Um, all of the dorms have programs every week that are um, designed by the RAs and the RDs, which are the resident directors. And what I mean by program is sometimes they'll have an ice cream social night, sometimes they'll have a movie night. And I, if I could go back, I probably would have taken more advantage of those um, just because it was a good way to meet people when you're a freshman, be involved with people that you live with so you can see them frequently. Um, and it's a good way to socialize and relax a little bit from school and those happen all the time. There's tons of events. So ask me more questions. I'd love to answer them. I wish I could think of more things off the top of my feet. Um, let's see. So if any of you are undecided or you haven't applied yet, um, well, we do have the first year college. If any of you have applied into the first year college, um, I think that's great. It's for students who are undecided um, and the college helps you matriculate into the major that you want. Um, you'd meet with an advisor um, frequently and they help you get on the track that you need to be. Okay, Nathaniel, thanks for asking. What do you think the best dorm location is? Okay, so yeah, I kind of forgot to mention that we do have a lot of dorms and they're located on different parts of campus. For example, the Tri Towers and the first year college dorms are on central campus. We have a north campus, east and west. Um, and the location, uh, the best one, it depends on a couple things, like what you want. Um, 
a lot of freshmen have this mindset, and I also did as a freshman, that if I didn't stay on central campus, I wouldn't really be connected to everything. Um, but I don't think that's true. But I, I do like the central campus location. If you don't mind, like, so for example, the dorms on north campus, I think, are really pretty. They're a lot more visually appealing. Um, and it's a little more quiet outside. Um, that would be where Gold and Welch are. And then, so if you don't want to walk far to the dining hall, say Fountain, Braga, Lee, Sullivan, and the Tri Towers are all the closest dorms to the dining hall. And that was another um, factor that I thought about because I, I'm just, I was kind of lazy back then and I didn't want to walk far at night. So a lot of freshmen do tend to like Central Campus. Um, so that would be good, but I, I don't think the other locations are, would necessarily be bad as a freshman either. Well, so if anyone doesn't have any last questions, um, it's about 530. So, um, I thank you for your time and, um, hopefully this helped you out a little bit.